This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've got some stakes racing action for you from the weekend. It's been a very quiet few weeks or so in the racing world. Things will be heating up in a couple of more weeks, but in the meantime, we did have some stakes racing action from around the country. We're going to head down to Calder first in the running of the Pete Axthelm. Seven and a half furlongs for three-year-olds on the turf course. Let's head down to Florida, the running of the Pete Axthelm. And they're off in the Pete Axtelm Stakes. Toward the outside, that's Dashboard Drummer that moves for the lead with Frisky Spider toward the hedge. Half length back, it's Heart of Jewels. Then toward the inside, that's Gin Rummy Champ. It's another half length in tight quarters. That's Grand Heritage hugging the hedge. Then it's another length back to Caballero Negro. Between horses, it's Sovereign Honor. Then it's two lengths back to Wire Bound. Inside of him, it's Quacker's Appeal. It's another two lengths back. That's More Burb taken in hand. Then there's a break of six lengths to Kaiman and toward the inside, Fort Prado is the trailer. They went the first quarter in 22 and 1. Up the back stretch they go. Heart of Jewels on the outside leads by a length with Frisky Spider in second position. Four lengths back to Gin Rummy Champ. Outside of him, it's Dashboard Drummer. A length and a half back to Caballero Negro. Then moving on the far outside, it's Wirebound. Toward the inside, it's Sovereign Honor. Looking for him, Grand Heritage. Then toward the far outside, more Burb moves up. It's another half length back. Toward the outside, Quackers Appeal. Three more lengths, it's Fort Prado. And six lengths to Kaiman. The half, 45 seconds flat. Past the quarter pole to the top of the stretch of the Pete Axdelm Stakes. On the outside, Gin Rummy Champ emerges with the lead a length and a half. On the outside, Dashboard Drummer. Caballero Negro between horses. Far outside, it's wire bound. Then widest of all, more Burb. They come to the final 16th now. Gin Rummy Champ on the outside. Here comes wire bound. It's wire bound. He takes the Pete Axdelm by a half length. Caballero Negro, a game second on the outside. More Burb was third. Wirebound picking up a victory here. He was beaten by five in the Bonnie Heath Turf Classic against his elders last time out. Prior to that, had some traffic trouble in the Calder Derby behind Eddington. But here gets the half-length win with a late run under Eduardo Nunez to beat favored Caballero Negro and more Burb back in the third spot at 21-1, to rallying from well off the pace in a uh, pretty exciting stretch run. Half a length and a neck separating the top three finishers. The winner, Wirebound, is a bay three-year-old gelded son of He's a Bull from Wise Woman by Believe the Queen. Bred in Florida by the Live Oak Stud and owned by Silver Diamond Thoroughbreds, trained by Manuel Criollo and ridden to victory by Eduardo Nunez. Wirebound covers the seven and a half furlongs on the firm surface at Calder in 127 and four. We're going to stay in Florida and head now to the opening day card at Tampa Bay Downs. The inaugural stakes, a $60,000 sprint for two-year-olds. Let's head back down to Florida this time to Tampa Bay in the running of the inaugural. And they're off. Hostile witness breaks for the lead, and there goes the favorite, Get Wild, quickly up now and assumes command. Boston Reader is away with a top flight, as well as Pyrite Springs, and the last horse away is Wazetta Bay. Up the back stretch. That's Boston Reader shooting through toward the rail, and now getting the lead by a neck. From the outside, Get Wild is there, second a length and a half further back. Captain Lindsay now attacks toward the rail to be third. Up on the far outside, that's Pyrite Springs now circling horses and moving up fourth. Hostile Witness is charging four deep on the outside now to be fifth. A length and a half further back. That shoot out down along the inner rail now six as they approach the quarter mile pole. That's Get Wild on the outside now taking command by a neck. Boston Raider tries to go with the leader toward the rail now to be second. Up on the far outside shoot out now gaining ground third. Hostile Witness swings wide for the drive fourth. Absolutely wide open with a front on still to run. Here comes Hostile Witness. Down the center of the track and now going to the lead. Sounds impossible. Is there toward the rail? Second and lead run by Captain Lindsay. But it's Hostile Witness to take the inaugural to length and a half. Sounds impossible. Second and Captain Lindsay completes the 10th race trifecta. 
hostile witness. A nice effort by this horse, whose only disappointing prior try had been when they stretched him to a mile and a sixteenth in the in reality division of the Florida Stallion Series. Back to a sprint here off of a nice finish in an allowance race last time out, and he rebounds with a length and a half victory at five and a half to one over Sounds Impossible. Both the, the winners coming from outside post positions both well out into the uh, into the middle of the track for the start. Sounds impossible. Had two and a quarter lengths on Captain Lindsay at the finish. The favorite in the field, Get Wild, showed very good speed before fading to finish fourth after dueling to mid-stretch. He was coming out of a try in the Huntington here in New York in his prior effort. The winner, Hostile Witness, is a bay two-year-old son of successful appeal from Diablo's Blend by Diablo, indicating that uh, a little bit of talent going short would certainly be in order. He was bred right here in New York by Says Who Thoroughbreds. He is owned by Thomas Wilmot and trained by Larry Bates. Ridden to victory by Carlos Penalba. Hostile Witness covers the six furlongs at Tampa Bay in 112 and 1. Continuing with stakes racing action now, we're going to head to Maryland and the running of the Geisha for Maryland bred three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going nine furlongs. Let's head down to Maryland, the running of the Geisha. Just about set for the Geisha. And they're off. And a good break for Free Dip and Hong Kong Monka. And Chris Sicky's come to join the leaders right up there on the inside. Three of them sorting out. Hong Kong Monka, Chris Sicky racing second on the inside. And Free Dip is taken back off the pace in third. Blind Canyon gets position toward the first turn, just traveling four lengths from the front. Sweep Up is next in mid pack, followed by Silmaril, who's now six to seven lengths off the lead. The entry of True Sensation and Pour It On, Pour It On is at the rail. True Sensation in the two path. And Jenna's Little Princess is last of all. About a dozen lengths separates first to last. Running past the six and a half for a long mark and Hunka Munka strolling out there in the slop at a good pace by some three lengths. Krasicki holding down second. Free Dip is giving a little bit more rain there in third. Blind Canyon is fourth five off the lead. Silmaril still travels about mid-pack, maybe a half dozen or so off the front. Sweep up racing to the outside of that. Pour it on in true sensation. There is a team that entry about 10 to 11 from the front. Jenna's Little Princess trailing the field. Racing past the half mile pole and it's Hunka Munka Still leading the way. Krasicki inside is Blind Canyon third. Free Dip is in fourth. Silmaril, now she's making her bid, and she's looking good. Silmaril in between horses, splitting rivals precisely at the 3 ace pole, and Silmaril is taking third. But Krasicki's on the chase now. That leader, Hunkamunka. Silmaril continues smoothly on the far outside. True sensation swings into action with Steve Cowboy Hamilton. Very wide into the stretch, though, and there into the stretch. And here's Silmaril, who comes away with the lead and comes away with confidence at the 360s mark. Chris Sicky and Hunka Munka next, followed by Pordon. And they're down to the final for long. And here is Silmaril by the three-length advantage. Pour it on, chasing gamely from second. And it's going to be Silmaril and Pour it on, giving it a good try. Silmaril in front. Silmaril wandering, but Silmaril grabs it. Silmaril length and a quarter. Pour it on, Chris Sicky and a Blind Canyon and Hunka Munka very tight for that spot. Silmaril getting a victory here as the favorite, running her record to six for nine career. She has been a uh, very solid campaigner. She won four in a row before losing by three and a half lengths last time out to graded stakes company in the Anne Arundel right here in Maryland. Here rebounds in restricted company with another nice victory here over Pour It On. Ch Just risky finishing in the third spot after uh, chasing the pace in the early part of the running. The winner, Silmaril, a dark bayer brown, three-year-old daughter of Diamond from Catabuck by Spendabuck, was bred in Maryland by Stephen Quick and Christopher Feferic, owned by the breeders and trained by Christopher Grove. Ridden to victory by Abel Castellano, Silmaril covers the mile and an eighth at Pimlico, Pimlico in 1.53 and 4. We're going to head to Kentucky now in the running of the My Charmer at Turfway Park. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, going a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head to Kentucky, the running of the My Charmer. And they're off for the lead from the outside. That is turned to last with Red Cell. Then through from the inside, Two Mile Hill, Always Dreaming, then Marwood. Moving into the first turn. Up on the outside, that is turn to last. Also up on the outside, Red Cell. It's Red Cell who puts ahead in front. Two Mile Hill is second. 
And it's turned to Lass, who runs a third. Marwood gains ground, takes fourth. Slamming Lil now fifth. Miss Wellspring is a sixth. Then up between horses, Dick's Chick runs seventh. Clouds of Gold is next. Moving up from the outside, it's Deed to the Gate. The trailer is Kissin' Leaf. They got the half in 47 and three. The leader down along the inside, that's still Red Cell. Has it by a half length over Marwood, who gains ground, takes a second. Through from the rail, Two Mile Hill gains ground in third. Then up from the extreme outside, Miss Wellspring fourth. Dick's Chick is fifth as they move into the stretch. Two Mile Hill now gets the lead from Red Cell. Then up from the outside, Marwood. Through from the inside, Dick's Chick is gaining ground. They're in the final furlong, and Two Mile Hill is in front. Red Cell and Dick's Chick down along the inside, but it's Two Mile Hill. Two Mile Hill wins by two lengths. Photo for second. Looked like Red Cell held on over Dick's Chick, then Marwood. Two Mile Hill getting the victory. This was a, uh, is a beautifully bred uh, filly. She tried some pretty good allowance company in Florida and New York. Did okay there. Had not been very successful when running up against Stakes Company, but here gets her Stakes victory. Sitting just off the early pace and winning by a length and three quarters over Red Cell. Long shot Dick's Chick rallies from well back into the third spot. Favorite in the field was Marwood, who did have a little bit of a troubled trip. She made a solid run into the turn, but flattened out in the stretch. The winner, Two Mile Hill, is a four year old Bay Philly, a daughter of AP Indy from Flat Fleet Feet by a fleet. She was bred in Kentucky by Caesar Kimmel, Philip Solance, L. Solance, and Heilig Broad Racing, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Eugene Melnick, and trained by Tony Ryan Studler, ridden to victory by James Lopez. Two Mile Hill covers the mile in the 16th at Turfway Park in 144 and 2. We're going to head out to California next for the running of the Oakland Handicap at Golden Gate Fields. We've got three-year-olds and up sprinters. Let's head to California, the running of the Oakland. And there they go. Blue's the standard. He's out for the lead covering Halo Cat. My captain is showing plenty of pace along with Green Team. And here's Green Team to fire into the lead through the early stages. One bad shark takes over third covering my captain for the back Saint to Fleet and Allwood. Green Team is the quickest through the opening quarter. He leads by more than a length to Blue's the standard and one bad shark. It's more than two and a half to my captain headed by Halo Cat. Halo Cat takes over the fourth spot before the 3-8 Saint of Fleet is three wide and he's showing some run to the far outside although he's seven from green team at the back races all wood through the turn green team gets all the attention in the oakland handicap he leads by a length and a half blues the standard is second and third is one bad shark for the back of the field my captain halo cat and saint of fleet all wood trails along the rail they're in the lane and the oakland handicap and it's green team in command at the eighth pole blues the standard follows from second and one bad shark is third for the back saint of fleet Fleet. Look at Green Team strut his stuff through the lane. He's seven to one on the board, and he's a double-digit winner. It's his tenth trip to the winner's circle. Green Team wins the Oakland handicap very impressively over Blues the Standard for the back one bad shark and Saint Fleet for fourth. Green Team, a pretty solid campaigner, particularly on the Northern California circuit. Third last time out at Santa Anita in the Cal Cup Sprint. Prior to that, the winner of the California Sprint Championships at Bay Meadows, allowed to go off at almost 8 to 1, setting the pace and holding on very nicely to win by three and a quarter lengths over the Game Blues. The standard who chased every step of the way came a little bit wide into the, uh, into the lane, ran a solid second off the layoff. One bad shark also setting a tracking trip to finish third. Saina Fleet, another big name horse who turned up in this race, did uh, run a little bit disappointingly. He had run some very good efforts earlier on in the year, also coming back off of a layoff. And I would imagine that this race may set up a couple of these returnees for much improved efforts next time out. 
The winner green team is a bay gelded five-year-old son of Huddle Up from Scare Tactics by Moscow Ballet. He was bred in California by the Harris Farm Incorporated, owned by the Ferro Family Trust and Jeff Bondi, trained by Jeff Bondi and ridden to victory by Roberto Gonzalez. Green team covers the six furlongs at Golden Gate Fields in 107 and three. We're going to pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be taking a look at stakes racing action from Southern California and New York. Please stay tuned. We are just beginning to feel the effect of real first-class breeding in the state. Over the next few years, there's going to be a tremendous improvement in the quality of horses in New York State. That prediction has become a reality. Today, the New York Breeding and Racing Program gives breeders and owners their best opportunity for success. When you get those breeders' checks, and I get stallion checks, and I get open owners' checks, it's unbelievable. It's great. When you breed a good horse in New York, its extra earnings power just resonates throughout the industry. When you go to the sales, and there's two horses side by side, and you like them both, and one's a New York bred, the New York bred just starts with a tremendous advantage. When I look at a catalog and I'm looking at individuals, if he's a New York bred, that's the bonus plan for me. Simply, it's the best program in North America, bar none. I would advise anybody to get a New York bred. Funny side, trying to pull up the upset here. 12 to 1 coming down to the line. And the gutsy galloping funny side has won the 129th Kentucky Derby. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now at Hollywood Park for a pair of stakes races from the weekend, beginning with the Native Diver, a grade three for the older horses. Let's head out to Hollywood in the running of the Native Diver. They're off. Black Bart broke running. Truly a judge is hard sent, and Supa Blitz is showing speed today, and these three go out and go very fast. Truly a judge wanted the lead, and he'll try to cross and clear for Martin, and he will. Truly a judge fastest at the clubhouse turn. Black Bart and Supa Blitz are now second and third. Then it's a lineup of three. Congrats three deep. Tis Bud and Calkins Road at the rail. Dynaver, the big favorite, breaks second to last, and the trailer is Mud Shark. Good pace on to the backstretch. It's truly a judge. Now he settles in and leads by a length and a half from Black Bart and Super Blitz together second and third. Tiz Bud is tugging in the pink. He's fourth and about three from the front. Calkins Road is at the rail. Meanwhile, Congrats is four deep. He's in the yellow and three and a half lengths off the lead. Mud Shark is out of last place. He's a neck in front of Dynever. Closer order though. Five furlongs from the wire. Six lengths from first to last as they head up the back stretch in the 26. Native Diver handicap and truly a judge is going to try to take them all the way. He's a half mile from home and a length and a quarter in front of Longshot, Black Bart in second. Supa Blitz is pushed along at the rail. He's third and two from the front. Tis Bud is up to fourth. Dynaver is about to slip through inside of Calkins Road. Dynaver rides the rail within six of the front. Congrats is outside of him, and Mud Shark is the trailer, and Truly a Judge is still fresh, fit, and strong at the quarter pole. Truly a Judge running a big one, and now he's only a quarter of a mile from home, and he's doing it well. Truly a Judge is three lengths in front of Black Bart. Dynaver is up into third. He'll have to make up four and a half in the final furlong of the native diver and truly a judge is asked for a full sprint to the wire he's got a three and a half length lead on diver who is now closing but he's got to go truly a judge has the lead black bart is pulled up truly a judge diver closing but too late truly a judge yes the 26 native diver handicap goes to truly a judge over diver cockins road third and tisbud fourth Truly a judge in his 41st career, first career start, picking up his first graded stakes victory. Off of a little bit of a freshening last time out, he returned with a nice win in optional claiming company, ran very well that day and repeated with another big front running win here over graded stakes winner Dynever, who rallied as is his usual running style from off the pace to finish second. Hard-hitting old Calkins Road, a mainstay on the, uh, the Southern California Calbred circuit particularly, picking up the third spot at 31 to 1. The winner, truly a judge, is a dark bay or brown six-year-old gelded son of Judge T.C., who now stands here in New York. Out of Truly Needy by Yukon, he was bred in Kentucky by Bob and B. Roberts. Owned by Alan Elshi Gaylord Edekman and Tom Harris. Trained by David Bernstein and ridden to victory by Martin Pedroza, Truly a Judge. Covers the mile and an eighth at Hollywood in one minute, 47 seconds flat. We're going to head right back out to Hollywood Park now in the running of the Grade 2 Bayacoa for three-year-olds and up, fillies and mares. We've got a couple of nice three-year-old fillies coming back, taking on some of their elders here at the end of the season. Let's head out to California in the running of the Bayacoa. They're at the post. 
they're off. Slow start for Born to Dance. Good start for Royally Chosen and Essence. These two right out to the front. Miss Lauren, AP Adventure at the Rail and Hollywood Story in the second flight, then keys to the heart, and the slow starting Born to Dance is at the back of the pack. Essence gonna move through and take over the lead from Royally Chosen, and Essence will lead to the back stretch as David Flores sits second on Royally Chosen a length and a half behind. Miss Lauren, AP Adventure at the Rail and Hollywood Story three deep, all within about three and a half lengths of the lead. It's three and a half more back to Keys to the Heart. She's got seven to make up, and Longshot Born to Dance is ten lengths off of Essence as they head five furlongs from the wire in the 23rd Bayakoa Handicap, and it is Essence three quarters of a length. Royally Chosen is content to sit and intently track Essence to the half mile pole. Royally Chosen sharp second, three quarters of a length off the lead. AP Adventure and Miss Lauren, no excuses for them. They're three lengths from the front. Hollywood Story is a length behind those two. Keys to the Heart is at the rail in sixth and six lengths off the lead. And Born to Dance is still the trailer as the tempo quickens. Three furlongs from the wire. Essence just in front. Royally Chosen. Miss Lauren three deep. Hollywood Story makes her move. It's a four wide move. Meanwhile, AP Adventure is just in behind the foursome that line up. She's only two from the front. And Royally Chosen has taken over the lead. Hollywood Story continues to close. AP Adventure's got to go now. She's a length and a half from the front. Miss Lauren is there. They come to the final furlong. Royally Chosen. Chosen. Hollywood Story to the center of the track. Hollywood Story strikes the lead. Royally Chosen back to second. AP Adventure going to do no better than third. Hollywood Story wins. Hollywood Story beat Royally Chosen by a length. AP Adventure third and Miss Lauren fourth. Hollywood Story, one of those three-year-olds. She was off for quite some time. In fact, was uh, off on the sidelines for a good portion of the season after the American Oaks returned in the Breeders' Cup. Distaff ran disappointingly there, but having won her maiden win in the Hollywood Starlet just about a year or so ago, we know she likes this racing surface. Returned with a stunning upset here at 5-1 to one over royally chosen a six-year-old Calbred mare who has been one of the hardest-hitting Southern California. California breds both Calbred and open Company. AP Adventure allowed to go off as the favorite off of the layoff. She had not raced since the Kentucky Oaks this spring, but after getting off to a terrific start this uh, early part of the spring, she did, uh, she did have a couple of setbacks. Returns with a very nice effort. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see AP Adventure running back with an improved effort. The winner, Hollywood Story, a dark bayer brown three-year-old daughter of Wild Rush from Li Wife for Life by Dynaformer, was bred in Kentucky by Vinery Stud, owned by George Krikorian and trained by John Sheriffs. Ridden to victory by Victor Espinosa, Hollywood Story covers the mile in a 16th at Hollywood Park in one minute, 41 seconds flat. We're going to head next to New York for a trio of stakes. We're going to kick things off with the ungraded, restricted, exogenous. This is restricted to three-year-old uh, three fillies, which have never won an open stake. We're going two turns. Let's head down to the Aqueduct Inner and the running of the exogenous. And they're off, and our right of spring stumbled coming out of there and has been left behind to the back of the pack. It's dream a dream for me who's racing for the lead. Tax the Queen is there on the outside. TG trying to bowl her way through down toward the inside. A hard to handle take me there is right there in the thick of it. And then it's our right of Springs who stumbled leaving the gate in the early trailer is strategy. And around the first turn, here comes Tax the Queen up and after dream a dream for me. And our right of Spring is now third. The quarter been 24 and two and into the back stretch run. Tax the Queen, dream a dream for me, sharing the lead. Our right of spring, just in behind them, two lengths off the lead while running along in third. TG, down on the inside, in between horses, take me there. And strategy has been guided into the clear on the outside. About six lengths from the duel up front between Tax the Queen and Dream a Dream for Me. They run a, uh, they reach the half mile pole after a half and 48 and two fifth seconds. Dream a Dream for Me and Tax the Queen. They've been head to head the whole way. They're entering the far turn that way with three and a half furlongs to go. Our right of spring is called on for run now, and she's moving after the leaders on the outside from third. TG, take me there in strategy. Around the far turn, here comes our right of spring with the three wide move after the lead. Tax the queen in between horses. Dream a dream for me down on the fence. Strategy is 
following All Right of Spring into the stretch, and they're at the top of the stretch. All Right of Spring has taken over. All Right of Spring in front. Strategy coming down the crown of the track. Dream a Dream for Me is a week in third. Tax the Queen in between horses. Down to the final 16th. All Right of Spring trying to hold off strategy as they come down toward the wire. A late run from Take Me There coming down to the finish. All Right of Spring wanders in front of and clear of strategy to win it. It is our Rider Springs, the winner. Strategy finishing second, followed by Take Me There. Our Rite of Spring, a very nice effort here by this filly, showing good early speed, drawing clear by a length and a half over the late running strategy. Take Me There, finishing in the third spot after racing between rivals throughout the early going. The winner, our Rite of Spring, did spend quite a bit of time in maiden company, but now that she has gotten through her uh, initial victory, she's run through a couple of pretty nice efforts and looks like a very nice developing filly to keep your eye on over the winter time. The winner, our Rite of Spring, is a three-year-old bay filly, a daughter of Stravinsky from Turkish Trist by Turkoman. She was bred in Pennsylvania by Michael Moran in Brushwood Stable, owned by John Comfort and Albert Weiss, trained by Jimmy Jerkins and ridden to victory by Norberto Arroyo Jr. Our right of spring covers the mile and 70 yards on the inner track at Aqueduct in 1 minute 43 and 3. We're going to head back to the inner track at the Big A with the running of the Garland of Roses for three-year-olds and up, fillies and mares, sprinters. Let's head back to New York in the running of the Garland of Roses. And they're off. Forest Music and Cologne and Sensibly Chic breaks with them, too. And it's Forest Music. Forest Music, the quickest of them all. A bit quicker than Cologne out of there. Quicker by a length. Two lengths back and Sensibly Chic is third. Another three or four back to Travelator. Already ten lengths off the leaders. A break of another three to Distinctive Kitten and six lengths back to Maria Cal. Twenty-one and three in the mud for the sensationally fast Forest Music. Forest music around the far turn and Cologne's running at her at the midway point on the turn. Forest music by length. Cologne second. Five lengths back. Sensibly chic is third. Another four to travel later. The field turns for home. Here's the half. 44 and two. It is forest music. A wild, wicked pace. And she's still in front. Cologne hasn't been able to get to her yet. And Sensibly Chic is coming now from third. Travelator is fourth. Forest Music has been running at an incredible rate of speed. And they're catching her. On the outside, here comes Travelator. Here's the wire. Travelator got there. And Sensibly Chic weakened at the end was Forest Music and Maria Kell. Final time, 10 and 3. Travelator, disappointing last time out, coming back to New York and showing much improved effort here, rallying from off, just off the pace to win by a head over Sensibly Chic. It was another neck back to the pace setter Forest Music in a very exciting renewal and a very quick renewal of this year's Garland of Roses. Colony, or Cologne, who uh, was the favorite in the field, did look like, uh, look like a pretty likely choice in here, but she was really disappointing after she was not able to, uh, to get the lead from the extremely fast Forest Music. The fractions were very, very sharp. They went the half in 44.45, and it set up very nicely for an improved effort for Travelator. The winner, Travelator, is a four-year-old Bay filly, a daughter of AP Jet from Raja Diddle by Raja's Revenge. She was bred right here in New York by Michael and Raylene Ann Shell. She is owned by our Sugar Bear Stable, trained by Gary Gullo, who is back to the training side after taking a stab as a jockey's agent for a little while. Ridden to victory by Norberto Arroyo Jr., who had a very good Saturday at the Big A. Travelator covers the six furlongs at Aqueduct in 110 and 3. We're going to head right back down to New York now for the running on Sunday at the Damon Runyon for two-year-old New York breads. Let's head down to the Big A in the running of the Damon Runyon. And they're off. Summerland very eager to go to the front. And it's Summerland who clears the field in the first 70 yards. Summerland quickly guided over to the inside. Big Apple Daddy comes on through between horses up like thunder on the far outside. And in between horses, it's sideways glance. Then down toward the fence, Freddy the Cap races fifth. Break of two and a half lengths back to sorted out sixth. Cherokee Chief is seventh in the early going. And Cherokee Chief had to study there going into the back stretch. Western Galaxy is now eighth. Kamenuch is ninth. Followed by Everything's Groovy, tenth toward the inside. The naughty New Yorker and the trailer is licensed to win. 
Continuing up the back stretch, a solid pace here, established by Summerland, who's getting pressure from Big Apple Daddy. Sideways glance to Ding Chili, while third toward the inside, up like thunder in the clear on the outside, fourth. Sorted out his fifth, only about four lengths from the lead with four furlongs to go. Then it's Cherokee Chief, Freddie the Cap, Naughty New Yorker, beginning to pick it up as they move into the far turn, and there goes Naughty New Yorker, rallying strongly on the far outside. Farther back in the field, everything's groovy about nine lengths from the lead. Midway around the far turn, Summerland, a tenuous lead coming to the top of the stretch. Naughty New Yorker, just a huge move on the far turn, has gone by them all to take the lead as the field turns for home. Top of the stretch, Naughty New Yorker, blitz on the far turn, has found him in front now by three widening lengths at the eighth pole. Summerland left reeling back in second, sorted out, is now third. Freddy the Cap is fourth on the far outside and sideways plants is fifth. And they are all left in the wake of Naughty New Yorker. Very sharp and fairly impressive here. Naughty New Yorker wins big. Sorted out second, Summerland third. Well, without galloping grocer in the field, they all showed up, a full field of 12 lining up, and it was a romping runaway for Naughty New Yorker. He took a while to break his maiden. Last time out, he won by 10 in a maiden victory in the slop. He was second to galloping grocer in the Bertram F. Bongard two races back, but here, a romping eight-plus length win at just about four to one, sorted out, rallying from off the pace, splitting horses to finish second at 66 to one off a fourth place finish in allowance contest. Company last time out, early pace setter Summerland holds on well to finish third. Favorite in the field was up like thunder, a Nick Zito trainee who did show good early speed before fading. He was unraced since running in the Bond Guard, and I have to assume that perhaps uh, something may have uh, been a set back. There may have been a little bit of a setback there for him. I would have anticipated seeing him run in the uh, in the showcase had he been right. So a little disappointing with up like thunder, but I imagine that he will rebound and run fairly well over the winter time if Nick Zito decides to keep him here in New York over the winter season. The winner, Naughty New Yorker, is a bay two-year-old son of quiet American from Naughty Natisha by known fact. Bred in New York by Dr. William Wilmot and Dr. Joan Taylor. Owned by the Fox Ridge Farm and trained by Pat Kelly. Ridden to victory by Jean-Luc Semin, Naughty New Yorker covers the mile in a 16th on the inner track in 144 and 2. That's going to wrap up a rather brief version of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for wa watching this week. Join me. We do hope you'll be able to watch again next week. We'll have a little bit of exciting action from California. We're going to have a pair of juvenile stakes races on the card next week from California that everyone will be interested in, the Hollywood Futurity and the Hollywood Starlet upcoming, possibly championships on the line, at least in the, uh, the, male run, the male division, the Hollywood Futurity. We've got a couple of very exciting juveniles heading out there off of tries in the Breeders' Cup, so you won't want to miss next week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'll see you back here next time. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.